Um, let's see. I figure we should probably keep this. Meat Hook Massacre is pretty strong. Break expectations and fading hope for fixing, and then eventually we divide by zero. I kind of wish Break Expectations scried. So our opponent has a bunch of one drops that are probably not one drops because they didn't play a one drop. So let's just get rid of Vampire Socialite to make their curve not a curve. I wonder if I need to find room for one more land in this deck, because we've gotten into a lot of scenarios. Oh, okay. Yeah, play with fire my face is a one drop. We've gotten into a lot of scenarios where it felt like the thing we needed to do was draw lands. But then again, we have found as many lands as were exactly necessary to survive, so I don't know. Well, they're in Bloodcaster instead of Sanguine Bloodstroke is an interesting choice. I'm going to keep Seagate Restoration because it is a land on turn four. Which I want to do. We will happily divide by zero Sanguine Brushstroke. Our opponent has been going very hard on playing around Jorai Disruption, which I respect. I don't think in this case that it was correct, but I respect it. Should I pay three life to hold up Fading Hope? Probably not. All right, there's our lands. We have our second black source for Meat Hook Massacre, which is probably going to end up killing both of our opponent's creatures. In fact, that is exactly what will happen. More snow lands. La di da. All right, Blood Artist is less scary when we have a Meat Hook Massacre in play. Our opponent has a lot of blood tokens for Sanguine Brushstroke. And a lot of Sanguine Brushstrokes. Okay. I'm a tiny bit concerned by that. That is a lot of blood, which is also a lot of damage. I could Fading Hope the Blood Artist here. I probably should Fading Hope this Blood Artist just to hurt the amount of mana my opponent has available, since they're incentivized to loot away so much with blood tokens anyway. Okay, so opponent currently has eight damage on board where the blood tokens, and Voldaren Estate makes blood tokens? That's actually, like, a very significant problem, isn't it? But it costs six mana to make a blood token with Voldaren Estate, as long as I keep their board relatively empty. Times like this, I'd kind of like to find a Soren just to make a lifelinker on board. Ange. Wait. Uh, Ange turns every blood token into four damage? It's kind of horrifying. Still, I think I can't divide by zero that here, because I just need to discover the formula. Oh, and it makes a blood token too? Oh, okay then. Sure. Um kind of scared by this. Or we can top deck Infernal Grass so I don't have to worry about that. That works too. I like that plan. Okay, so we Infernal Grasp the Ange before that gets horrifying. They sack a blood token to burn us for four. I'm going to take two damage from Infernal Grasp. <laughs> Play Geist Channeler to make Discover the Formula cheaper. Play Jawar Disruption because I don't want to miss a land drop. And pass. Okay. Well, they're in Bloodcaster. More blood tokens, yay. 
Blood Artist. More Blood Tokens. Yay. So that's going to be 8 damage worth of Blood Tokens. That's a little deeply concerning. Especially because they then get to make more with... Well, they're in a state. Sorin, however, I do think is exactly what we were looking for. And Fading Hope is also very good here. So I get to Fading Hope the Voldaren Bloodcaster. That way they're not making blood tokens off of both of these creatures dying. I don't really need a key to the archives right now. Geist Channeler gets to attack before Meat Hook Massacre shrinks its power. Should I kill this Blood Artist before they can play Voldaren Bloodcaster? Or should I use my Black Mana to play Soren? Or... Should I use it to play Key to the Archives? My opponent's going to do 4 damage to me with Blood Tokens here. Developing the Soren now would be a pretty big deal. This Key to the Archives could be so many things that are actually helpful, though. But I think I need the lifelink from Sorin. Kind of immediately. Should I break expectations to stop them from having the Bloodcaster? They're just going to immediately loot away whatever I give them with break expectations, though. So I don't think I can actually do that. No, I think we pass here. Go snag socks. Alright, socks, you've been requested. Come on, bud. Hoop. Alright, damage, damage. Opponent draws a card. <laughs> damage, damage, opponent draws a card. Sanguine brushstroke number three, huh? Oh, that's very bad. Dividing this by zero doesn't accomplish too much, but at least limits the amount of mana they have available to spend. I think I get environmental sciences here because I want this life gain. Otherwise I'm very in danger of dying to Voldaren Estate. As it stands, I am still very in danger of dying to Voldaren Estate. Whoa, they played that rather than cracking the blood token? That's kind of confusing, but okay. So... If I play Key to the Archives, I can play a Time Warp here. Because I have Geist Channeler to discount it. Alternative options. Not a ton. I think that's sort of what I'm banking on right now. We find absolutely nothing useful. If I manage to live through the next turn, Approach of the Second Sun could be meaningful, but I don't know how likely that is. Doomblade and Growth Spiral do nothing. So we take Approach. We get rid of Break Expectations. How do we 
do this. They can block with Voldaren Bloodcaster. Does two damage, puts us to three, puts us to four, gives them a blood, does six damage. So I can't block Voldaren Bloodcaster. What if I swing? They block. I take one, go to four. Two blood tokens is six. I, I don't know how I get out of this. I don't think there's a way. Maybe I'm supposed to uptick Soren? Is that like the only way I can get out of this? Oh, what if I just don't... What if I just stay at 7? I still die. Because I take 8, right? Well, what if I double block Voldaire and Bloodcaster? Maybe? Maybe that gets me somewhere. I can't meat hook because that triggers to give them three blood and does six damage, well, three damage to me, which just makes me super dead on board, I think. deciding to let me untap gave me an out here, but it did almost end up giving me an out here. I don't know what that out would have been. Oh, they don't have a card in hand! Oh, they don't have a card in hand! Oh, they don't have a card in hand. Okay. Up to eight. still no way around this though, right? Swing with both of these creatures, meat hook for one. I think they just choose not to block with Bloodcaster. I think I needed to draw a removal spell for only Bloodcaster. I think I'm gonna give him too many blood tokens here. Maybe I could have just not attack, or maybe I could have just not played the meat hook. Was that right? Yeah, I'm just dead. They have 12 damage there. I just needed to not play the meat hook. I don't know if that actually was enough to live, but it was more correct. Three brush strokes is brutal. Huh. How do we... I don't really have anything I can do about that, right? I just need to not get three brush strokes. Never seen blood be so burny. In my experience, when it wins, that's usually how it wins. It doesn't have a super fantastic directly aggro plan but it's got a very good post-aggro cleanup plan. Hmm. This is not a good curve out. I guess I'm not really break expectations -ing anytime soon then. We do have a cap, that is true. I do like that part of this whole thing a lot.
Bloodcasters annoying. This is a lot of snow lands this early on. I suppose I should be happy about that. All right, we take a little bit of damage. Florian, I can get rid of. And then we can get a Teachings. And we can play our land, play Break Expectations, and then play Teachings. I will happily get rid of Brushstroke. My opponent can have their duplicate Florians. I don't really want to hold up Jawari Disruption because they're probably going to have an untapped land to play. I'd rather play the Teachings of the Archaics this turn while we can actually be guaranteed that'll work. More lands, okay. Well, we're one snow land away from Blood on the Snow being able to get back Leer, which is kind of interesting. Also, Leer just straight up blocks Florian, which is kind of interesting. Opponent finds a land. Okay, we just straight up have enough lands to Blood on the Snow back Leer at some point. Two turns from now. Next turn, if Leer is still in play, I can Teachings of the Archaic and Divide by Zero. Alright, Leer just straight up stops Florian. That's stellar. They might go blank us here, in which case I think we're getting rid of Jawari Disruption and Shipwreck Marsh. Nope. Oh well, they still can because that comes into play untapped. Yeah. So Jawari Disruption and Shipwreck Marsh go away. Ooh, alright. Meat Hook Massacre for three seems pretty clean here. You want to block with that Florian to prevent me from gaining one life opponent? No? Okay. Two blood tokens for the opponent. Replicating Ring they got because we cast Break Expectations, and they got to draft a card as a result. Replicating Ring is the best card in that spellbook. It's decent. There are a lot of times where I think Treasure Chest is better than it, though. Guess I'm gonna play Seagate Restoration this turn. My Leer is still blocking things meaningfully. And if they wind up killing my Leer, I've got Blood on the Snow. I'd like them to put more things on the board for Blood on the Snow if possible. Okay, they just Blood Tie the Harvester, my Leer? Okay. That works for me. I can't believe this Blood on the Snow is actually gonna be stellar. <laughs> Yep, you can just keep playing creatures, opponent. I'm fine with that. Get to play more lands. And blood on the snow. Destroy all creatures. Get back Leer. Gain a bunch of life. Player deck list is only showing 34 cards main deck. Yeah, so one of the um, problems with Cardboard Live right now is it doesn't include the cards that have been modified or any of the new cards. Can't lose from here? Oh, we can super lose from here. Definitely, absolutely can super lose from here. Last game was a very strong example of all the opponent needs to have is a couple of brush strokes and we get burnt out to Kingdom Come. Uh, 
I like Port of Carfell as another way to reanimate Lear and Demir decks. Yeah, if we needed to reanimate Lear more often, then I could see that being meaningful. But there's just not a ton of scenarios in which Lear getting reanimated makes a difference. Like, very few games come down to Lear dying, and then it mattering whether Lear comes back or not. Hmm. Should I just play Key to the Archive here, rather than discover the formula? That sounds like coward talk. Hmm. Okay. Break expectations when they have two blood tokens doesn't exactly sound like a good use of my time. Especially when I can discard break expectations to a blood token. Have I played a land yet this turn? I don't believe so. Which means we can just loot away this break expectations now. Draw a card. Not a land token. Disappointing. Doesn't mesh well with snow, but if you're not playing snow, it's a pretty low cost inclusion. Ah, uh, being a tap land is not, in my mind, a low cost inclusion. Like, there's a lot of decks where I don't play the full four Juari disruptions, and you can kind of think of it like a Juari disruption in most senses. I don't really want them to get rid of a card from my graveyard, so we'll bounce that hive. Land. Lovely. Geist Channeler, how come you weren't one lower? I'm probably supposed to play the Soren here. Start getting my 2-3 lifelinkers. Key to the Archives, probably discarding Geist Channeler, most likely. I don't want to... Ooh. Okay, we can probably get Approach to the Second Sun here. I don't think I want Blood on the Snow to go away. Or, I, I don't think I want Blood on the Snow to be cheaper. I can't really avoid that with Discover the Formula, but... If it becomes 4 mana, then it can never reanimate Lear, which kind of is a bummer. can still reanimate Soren, which is pretty good. Is Seek completely random, or does it get the top available cards in the deck? I believe Seek is completely random from all available legal targets. Sanguine Brushstroke. That sucks. Not happy about that one bit. How many... Eight night counters is when this turns into infinity mana. Okay. So I can fading hope a ton of things here and then break expectations to get rid of one of them. But blood tokens continue to make that bad. I probably should be cutting the break expectations to bring in something. I sort of forgot to do that. All right, let's approach. Gain a bunch of life. Uptick Soren, I think at this point. Ugh. I don't want to lose four life. But I do want Soren to not be on top of my deck. A painful conundrum. We will decline. My wings are not... I should have spent more black mana so we have more ability to fading hope here. Yeah. The fact that Soren can't put the card you decline on into the graveyard really feels very painful. I don't know that it makes the card bad, because the minus two is still very good, but it 
feels disappointing at the very least. Unge is a lot of burn. We're probably at the point at which I want to cast this blood on the snow. Although that's going to be a lot of blood tokens, huh? I should probably bounce a Voldaren Bloodcaster so that they're not getting two blood tokens off of all of this. Oh, I guess Fading Hope means that I do get to get rid of that Soren, don't I? Wait, so does that mean that I'm supposed to be just firing off as many Fading Hopes as I can? Because actually I'm totally on board for that. <laughs> oh, they just don't want me getting those scries, huh? <laughs> Understandable. Okay, so... Hmm. Combat. Swing with my 2-3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Blood on the snow. Destroy all creatures. Pay with 5 snow. The draw 3 isn't sick here because it actually shuffles that approach away, and that seems like the easiest way to win this game. Okay, and then we are five cards away. Hmm. I think like I'm probably still supposed to down tick Soren. I think that buys us more turns overall. Any reason to cast the blood on the snow in hand rather than the one from the graveyard? Um, I don't know whether having the five mana one in the graveyard is better. It might... Does it play around go blank differently? I, I mostly did it because I wanted to have more mana up, but... I don't know whether... In a scenario where my opponent casts Go Blank, am I supposed to cast this Discover the Formula for my graveyard? Unsure. Wait, Seek doesn't shuffle? Okay, well we gotta sh test that then, because that would be weird if that's the case. But I think you're right. I do recall hearing that. <laughs> Oh, that's true. Now we can cast Discover the Formula without making Blood on the Snow cost 4 mana, which would be... Except, Blood on the Snow casting 4 mana doesn't matter if all of the Blood on the Snows are in the graveyard, because we can't do that without having the Leer in play. I guess it doesn't make Blood on the Snow good if they... I should have cast the Blood on the Snow from the graveyard originally, not understanding how Seek worked, because then if they find a removal spell for Leer, I could use the Blood on the Snow in my hand as a way to get back Leer. But now understanding how Discover the Formula works, if that is indeed correct and it doesn't shuffle, then I sh casting the cheaper Blood on the Snow was completely correct because it meant we could also play Discover the Formula. Hmm. I really want to find out more about that seek thing. I'm almost completely confident it's correct that discover the formula and seek doesn't shuffle. Okay, so assuming we don't want to play break expectations, I don't think Hullbreaker Horror is good here. Infernal Grasp feels awful, but it might be Correct. Does still hit Blood Vile Purveyor and Anish, which is a problem. Disdainful Stroke does as well, but... Eh. 
Am I supposed to be playing Go Blank? Is that possibly correct? It's not like remotely exciting, but it is mind rot, and that's probably better than Break Expectations. Then again, Break Expectations does. It does still do stuff, it's just not good in late game scenarios. But like, the times where it hit. Uh. Bloodstroke. Or Blood. Blood something stroke? Artful stroke? Artful blood stroke? Whatever that card is. The times where it hit that were meaningful. This is hard to keep, unfortunately. This is easier to keep, thankfully. Would I rather have Infernal Grasp than Fading Hope early on? Probably. I'm never entirely certain whether leading on something like Shipwrecked Marsh on turn one is correct. It does save me from having awkward mana if I play all of the Storm Giants. Let's see. Infernal Grasp. Would I rather hit Florian than Blood Tithe Harvester? Probably not. Because I don't want to take three damage. And I can just divide by zero, Florian. Oh, wow. Cemetery Gatekeeper punished that decision a lot. That's kind of surprising. Didn't see that coming. Making all of my spells being instants kind of painful. Don't think I want Florian in play. I think I want Mascot Exhibition here, because I'm about to play Key to the Archives. And we're just going to play the 7-drop next turn. Counterspell, Doomblade, Putrefy. Those are all kind of okay. Putrefy answering Cemetery Gatekeeper is kind of nice. Counterspell is Counterspell. It's better than Jwari Disruption, right? I think I'm probably supposed to take Putrefy. That's tough, though. Yeah, my mana is taken for the next couple of turns, but I'd like to be able to remove Cemetery Gatekeeper rather than just having it sit around forever. But maybe I'm just supposed to find a board wipe to deal with that. And take the counterspell to make sure I don't get bloodstroked in. Eventually. It's just tough for me to foresee Putrefy being meaningful from the way these first couple of games played out. But it's the choice between two cards that both seem to have fringe benefits at different points in the game. Counterspell is better like five turns from now. Putrefy is better like two or three turns from now. But I have no way of knowing if either of them is going to even be relevant. Oh! Doomblade Killing Gatekeeper. That's a good point. I forgot that it wasn't a black card. I'm probably still supposed to take Putrefy, though, because it kills other things when flashbacked from the graveyard. Fading Hope doesn't seem awful. Eventually. For the time being, Mascot Exhibition, I like. Alright, opponent. Kind of constrained. My 1-4-4 four, four is the only thing that can block Florian or Gatekeeper, so if they find a removal spell for it, I'm not happy about that. Or if they just have a removal spell for it. I guess I still get to double block Gatekeeper. Which means taking a annoying amount of damage... It's 
Brushstroke. Gosh. That card's brutal. Not in time to find this counter spell either. If Putrefy could hit enchantments, it definitely would have been the correct card to take. Alright, Meat Hook Massacre at least clears out the Blood Artist and the Florian and leaves me with Counterspell up. I don't gain any life, but I'm taking three damage here. I can Fading Hope a creature land this turn, I guess. Is that even worth doing? Huh. Oh, wow. What is this? It says they have another Sanguine Brushstroke, huh? Okay, definitely counterspelling go blank in this situation. What's your follow up to that opponent? Epicure. Inconvenient. Juari Disruption, not good. Kind of have to see Gate Restoration here, even though Den of the Bugbear. I'm pretty much dead if I don't hit an untapped blue source, right? Den of the Bugbear does four damage. They can do two damage here. Epicure does one. It's lethal. <sighs> if I don't play Restoration, I can animate Hall of the Storm Giants to block Den. Fading Hope the token. I don't think I can afford to play Seagate Restoration here. Not activating the blood. I don't know if that's good or bad for me. Go blanks, pretty annoying. Also means that they are not going to be animating a land this turn. Brutal. Okay. I lose Seagate and Jwari. I still need Fading Hope. Okay, Discover the Formula, probably the best possible draw. Life is still very hard, and I am just dead if they find another brush stroke. But the fact that they weren't using their mana to crack those blood tokens more aggressively is pretty nice. Blood Tide Harvesters, more damage. Don't love that. No attacks. Do like that. Okay, deck! Divide by zeros and Sorin! Alright! That's magic cards. I like that. Gonna make a life linker. I don't think I'm supposed to divide by zero blood tithe harvester. I can't give them another ETB to make blood tokens. Could the opponent have killed us if they were actually trying? I don't think I saw a spot where they had lethal. I think they could have gotten a lot closer to lethal if they had aggressively cracked blood tokens instead of presumably holding on to go blank. Should I divide by zero sanguine brushstroke? Re-giving them the ETB is kind of painful, but... With multiple divide by zeros... This is probably the most unsure of anything 
that I've done this game that I have been, but I want to do this before I Fading Hope the Den of the Bugbear because I don't want them to be able to tap Den of the Bugbear in response to the Fading Hope to crack a blood token here. Okay, so I can get Teachings of the Archaics here, and then Fading Hope Den. I don't want all the Storm Giants. And now, I guess I have to decide if I want to divide by zero this epic here to make Soren able to down tick. Oh, they're just going face. Okay, well, then I don't have to. Soren can just down tick normally. I should have used Key to the Archive and held up Snow Mana. Keep being in the habit of not using this thing, which is very bad. All right, we get our 2-3. I am one mana short of Discover the Formula into Divide by Zero, which is painful. Six minutes of time. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, uh, can I do anything about this? No, they'll replay it again immediately. And this gives them Blood Artist, which potentially makes the entirety of last turn's line with Divide by Zero wrong. Oh, the Bloodcaster hurts. But we have Discover the Formula. This does... I gain life on this block, on the whole of things, because of Meat Hook Massacre. And because of Lifelink on my creature. Oh, right, that transforms. Forgot that was a thing it can do. I can probably still answer that, though. Geist Channelers and Leer. Do I have a board wipe in here? No, but I have other nonsense that makes Leer seem pretty good right now. So we can Fading ho. Bloodbat Summoner. Don't really want to break expectations right now. Combat. Swing with our 2-3. Gain some life. Pass the turn. Why is it acting like I can cast Discover the Formula? I can't, right? I only have 5 mana up. Okay, I have access to three copies of Divide by Zero. Five minutes. Under no circumstances can they have another Sanguine Blood Stroke. Snag Environmental Sciences. Gaining four life is relevant. Not allowed. No Sanguine Bloodstroke for opponent. We loot away a Geist Channeler, I think. We get a Geist Channeler. Okay. And one that's more expensive, even. Still, digging deeper is good. Okay, got our turn. Leer is pretty bad. Combat... Swings? Oh, is it, is it acceptable to attack with Leer here? Don't think so. I think we need the pair of blockers. Three, six, one. I don't think I play the other environmental sciences this turn. I think I want to have Discover the Formula plus multiple spells available. Oh, should I discover the formula at sorcery speed in case I could Geist Channeler? Something? 
Unclear. Soren the Mirthless. That resolves. I don't care about Soren. I care about Brushstroke a lot more. Opponent gets a 2 3 flyer. Sure. I might not have used my mana very efficiently. Discover the formula, find a bunch of stuff. The break expectations here is exactly where it's stellar. We get to bounce the Sanguine Bloodstroke. We get to get rid of Jawari Disruption, draw a card. All the Storm Giants, sure. I don't dislike that at all. Fading Hope, the Vampire. Scry, discover the formula is excellent. Fading Hope, no, we want that in the graveyard to have an answer to one of their lands. So we get to play Geist Channeler, discount, discover the formula. Geist Channeler, discount, discover the formula. Break Expectations, the Sanguine Bloodstroke. Play all of the Storm Giants in case we get to the point where we can do something with two of those, maybe? Play Environmental Sciences, want to gain life. I think we don't play the Hall of the Storm Giant. Uh, three, six, yeah we do. There's potentially a point soon where we can play both of those. Possibly even as soon as next turn we might be able to attack with both of them. I haven't actually done the math. Attack Thief on its face. Don't care about Soren at the moment. Opponent loots away a piece of junk. I guess I can break expectations again now? I should probably do that. Gain a little bit of life. Get rid of Florian, they drew a land, they get another piece of junk. We have five mana up, which is discover the formula plus fading hope plus two drop. Should I discover the formula at sorcery speed? Probably yes. Geist Channeler, Blood on the Snow, one mana off. I should steal Geist Channeler. No, because I could have discovered the formula into a one drop. I don't know that I had meaningful one drops, though. Okay, blockers. See if the opponent can kill us. And if not, if we can kill them. You fight for me. Which might be possible if they don't have enough blockers. Although, if they don't spend all their mana. I don't know that I can actually remove enough blockers here. I can Fading Hope one, Fading Hope another. There's no way I have enough mana here, right? I don't think. Okay, Fading Hope a two, three, three, six, one, ten, fifteen. 10, 15, no. Okay, I do not have enough mana. We are not even gonna try. We are going to swing with these two and leave everything else back to block, and that should be time efficient enough. Opponent loots, drains. Opponent loots, drains. I think I'm casting Blood on the Snow here, destroying all Planeswalkers, and downticking Soren. Do I have a Soren in the graveyard? Yes. Give me my Soren. 
Give me my life linker. Pass the turn. Okay, one minute left. I think we can do this. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure I can win this turn. Provided they don't blow up too much of my stuff. Um, that's kind of annoying. I actually need those fading hopes. Eh, whatever, it's fine. I don't have the time to think about it. Opponents at 11. I have an Infernal Grasp to remove one creature. And I only need one Hall of the Storm Giants to connect at this point. Oh, or they could even just let me use my mana now. That works too. I probably should let this attack and then just like triple block it. Oh, that's true. We have a two mana leer. I kind of forgot about that. Eh, we're not on any particular crunch on time, so let's draw some cards first. Right? We good? Woo! Ugh. What was that activation? I think they were trying to make me think more and spend more clock since I most likely had Lethal on their turn. 